What's good, YouTube? Dragonman24 here, welcoming you back to another episode of our Let's Play of Fire Emblem Three Houses for the Nintendo Switch. We we're picking up on the Golden Deer route, uh, Chapter Four. We're about to begin the uh, story mission, Mutiny in the Mist. Uh, I did some battles off screen, did some teaching off screen. Not too much has changed. We might have a couple of certifications and support conversations to take care of. I, I'm, see the thing is, I'm also currently playing, um, playing Crimson Flower, and I have Male by Leth, so. I always forget when I come back to this one that we're playing female by Leth and that she's so much more better looking. Look at her! She's adorable. I love her. Oh, okay. Let's start with certifications because we do have a couple of people. Marianne's already there. Oh, not a couple. Just, just Leone. Just Leone. Uh, we will make you a soldier because you're all about that lance. You know, I just realized something. In all three houses, the person with the orange hair all that hard work's paid off. is just like staple cavalry unit. Leone, Ferdinand, Sylvain. Sylvain's hair is more of a reddish orange, but still it counts. We have a lot of conversations. Oh boy. Well, now's as good a time as I need to do them. You. Just what are you up to? Well, if it isn't Lawrence. Yes, it is. Try not to sound so affronted. And you're just whimsically wandering the monastery grounds again, I suppose? Oh, naturally. After all, I really do adore the Garrick Mock Monastery. No, I think not. That impish look on your face does not suggest innocence. You are up to something. Lawrence, control yourself. Let's not start throwing around baseless accusations. It's not proper. This monastery is packed with a thousand years of history. Well, five years shy of a thousand if we're going for accuracy. Those pillars, these walls, even the floor, they've all seen more than we can possibly imagine. Our distant ancestors may have walked these very halls. Doesn't that excite you? Perhaps, if this were a discussion about art, but I'm afraid walls and floors are not sufficiently interesting to hold my attention. Nor will they suffice to distract me from what is plainly suspicious about you. House Regan was on the brink of collapse until they suddenly revealed you as their legitimate heir. That was only a year ago. Where were you before then? Are you even a true heir to House Regan? If what I'm is with Lawrence, bro? Descent, how do you imagine I acquired my crest? A crest is insufficient. I am referring to your noble disposition or lack thereof. Well, that's what I came here to hone, after all. I can only hope that you will assent to instruct me in the art of snobbery, Professor Lawrence. <laughs> I do not think you grasp the significance of the responsibility you bear. Do you even know what it means to lead the Leicester Alliance? I take no pleasure in saying this, but much of the chaos in our ranks right now is due to the failings of House Regan's leadership. I intend to set things right. And once I expose What's up with Lawrence, bro? Why is he so... My rightful place? That is precisely what I will do. To be blunt, it would have been better had you never shown your face here. Wow. Okay, they don't like he or he doesn't she like Claude. It. He just can't be reasoned with. Golly, bro. Oh man, there's gonna be a whole lot of conversations. This might just be a full blown conversation episode. <sighs> Claude, why didn't you say anything? You were praying so fervently, I didn't want to interrupt. I appreciate the sentiment, but I wasn't praying. No? What then? I was just thinking about the goddess. Were you now? Fascinating. Please, go on. Not here. Let's go somewhere else. Oh, no. So Ignatz is like big brain. The the goddess, then. Yes. All right, consider this. The archives here have all kinds of texts about the goddess, right? But when people tell stories of the goddess, it's only myths and legends that glorify her. 
they probably hoped to rake in more followers by glorifying the goddess as much as possible. That would be why the church tends to quietly shove all of their more questionable records under some secret rug somewhere. C Claude, don't put words in my mouth. That's not what I said. I was just wondering what the goddess looks like. That's the kind of thing I like to think about. What the goddess looks like? Well, I suppose I could show you. Exists, she probably looks a lot like us. In fact, she probably wouldn't be so different from that old woman working here in the dining hall. Rip. Claude, please stop. The goddess I imagine is absolutely beautiful. How rude of you, Ignatz. I'm sure that old woman was lovely back in her day. <laughs> I really enjoyed that. Claude has some of the best conversations with people, bro. Ah, so I see. If one were to combine this incantation method with the power of a crest, then in theory, it should... Hey there. Still studying, are we? Isn't it past your bedtime? Claude, I really don't appreciate you interrupting me right now. Uh, but if you don't get your sleep, you're never gonna grow big and strong. <laughs> uh-huh. The last thing I need is you fretting over me as though I'm some child. He loves to tease her. a few years younger than you, you know. Hardly worth noting. Furthermore, my grades in magic and basically every other subject are far higher than yours. Ooh, she just big brain played you. I'm not you. trying to treat you like a child, I promise. And this is me treating you like, like a princess. <laughs> now, come along, princess. Brush your teeth and get yourself ready for bed. I could read you a story if that helps. Oh my god. Oh, audacity. Whatever it is you think you're treating me like, it's unendingly annoying. If a child and a princess are out, what's left? Should I treat you as a noble hero? Draw your sword, Lysithia. If you wish to continue studying, you must first defeat me in battle. <laughs> that stern look on Claude's face is Come so now, uncharacteristic. Face me like the hero of legend that you are. I find myself speechless in the wake of your staggering ignorance. Now, please leave me be. Okay, okay, I can take a hint. But in all seriousness, you shouldn't neglect your sleep. You'll fall ill if you push yourself too hard. Oh, and just so you know, I heard a rumor that this library is haunted. He's playing at her <laughs> She's afraid of ghosts. It's probably not true. Right? Right. Anyhow, I'm off to bed. Good night. You know, I am suddenly rather sleepy. Excuse me while I see myself out. <laughs> No matter how she tries to hide it, she's still a young girl at heart. That was sweet. Claude, you bastard. Let's talk to Marianne. Um, this might actually take the whole episode, guys. There's a hmm. lot of conversation. Um, Claude? Hmm? Oh, Marianne. Have the gods taken pity on my lost soul and revealed a sign to me? I've been researching the ten elites of Fodlan, but I can't tell fact from fiction. Anyhow, what can I help you with? Well, um, I found this pendant, and I think it's yours. Ah, right you are. You know, honestly, I've resigned myself to never seeing it again. It's a keepsake from my uncle, who has passed on. If I truly lost it, my grandfather would have had my head. Thanks for returning it to me, Marianne. You saved my tail. Please, it was nothing. I should be... No, I think that's enough researching for today. Why don't you join me for a nice chat? I just came to deliver the pendant. Sounds awfully lonely to only talk to those whom you have business with. Do you really dislike talking to people that much? It's just... I never know what to say. I'm sorry. No need to apologize. We'll figure it out as we go. Tell me, are you like this with your father, too? Within the Alliance, Margrave Edmund is prone to debate. With a father like that, I would have thought... Margrave Edmund is my adoptive father. Adoptive? Oh, okay, I didn't know that. I didn't know. Where were you born? That is none of your concern. Ooh! I, um, I really must be going. Okay, Marianne, you... something. That she, much got, is clear. she got secrets. Ah, but that just makes me all the more desperate to know her secrets. 
Claude and I are on the same page. Claude and I are on the same page. Thank you. <gasps> there are so many conversations to be had. Ignots, let us take a short break. I will pour tea. Please choose a teapot for us to use. You want me to pick one? I don't see any other Ignots around here, do you? Go on now, we're wasting time. The pots are over here. I will leave the selection to your judgment. Ah, I'm pretty sure Ignots is a commoner. See. But I'm not sure. How about this? That's rather plain. Why did you choose that one? The tea you chose has a very subtle taste, as well as a smooth, light texture. Such an unassuming tea calls for an unassuming pot, and one that complements the tea's color. In addition, the pot I selected has a floral design. Although we can't go for a walk today, we can still bask a little in nature's beauty. Very interesting. You know, you have an absolutely marvelous aesthetic eye. Precisely what I would expect from the son of a merchant house that has enjoyed the Gloucester's patronage for so many years. After we graduate, when you begin your trade in earnest, I will introduce you to my father. Oh, that sounds wonderful. But I'm afraid I'm already on the path to becoming a knight. Ah, right. You are a second son. Second son. Still, okay, so he's a noble. Your eye for beauty is a talent that should not go to waste. Very well. If you are to be a knight, then I shall happily take you into my service. Ah, well. Hmm. What does that displease you? Hmm. Not at all. I just need a little time to think it over. So knights serve their lords. I the know that much. Unwavering. But in all other matters, he is woefully indecisive. Knights serve their lords. And the firstborn child with a crest in a household is deemed the, uh, the successor of the house, I believe, right? So Ignaz being the second son means that he doesn't have that privilege. So instead, he's not crying about it like a little baby or some other students that we know. He's just like, you know what? Can't be the lord of my house. Might as well become a knight. I like that. Ignatz has got a good head on his shoulders. There is a matter of significance I'd like to discuss with you. I know you're always seeking the attention of ladies. This guy? Why are you wasting your breath on me? Don't be silly. I want to discuss the future of the Alliance. To have a constructive and candid exchange of opinion. I'm not so sure I'm the one being silly. Actually, I'm busy. Stuff to do. Now, hold on just a moment. House Ordelia will never benefit from such a narrow-minded mentality. I was under the impression you were interested in me as a person. Oh, what wow. do house matters have to do with anything? As it stands, the bonds between Alliance Lords are quite weak. If this state of affairs persists, I'm afraid those bonds may dissolve entirely. I couldn't care less. Oof. House Ordelia may be small, but a small house is fettered by fewer obligations than a larger one. Apply yourselves actively in diplomacy, negotiate wisely, and you could do much to help maintain peace among the neighboring lords. The recognition of those lords would benefit your house immensely. To that end, why not start with me, the heir to House Gloucester? It couldn't hurt House to Gloucester, friends, could it? Yes, yes, of course. Interesting. When the time comes, but right now I'm quite busy. Maybe later. As it is, I'm studying magic for the benefit of the Alliance, and I would appreciate it if you left me to it. Ah, I see. Then forgive the intrusion. I will take my leave of you for now. But if there is any way I can be of help to you or your house, I hope that you won't hesitate to ask. After all, as I'm sure you know, the future of the Alliance is my responsibility. <laughs> it's really not, but whatever. The future, he says. Hmm. <laughs> As though I have a future. Oh no, Lysithia. As though I have a future. Don't say things like that. Oh, that broke my heart a little bit. The reason I say that him being from House Gloucester is interesting is Hello, because Marianne. I know that later oh, on well, you hope. are able to get a weapon from a chest Thank you. that uh, correlates you to his crest. Is that so? I feel fine. Hmm. I'm pretty sure it's a weapon. It might even be a lance. What, 
Was there something you needed? Uh, how unseemly of me. My apologies. It is not my intention to stare. Does something about me seem... off? Uh, not at all. I was just remembering your father. Or rather, comparing my experience of him to you. She's adopted. Your father, Margrave Edmund. He is one of the shrewdest nobles in all the Alliance, with a noted gift for pointed speech. On and beyond the battlefield, his words have the power to move friend and foe alike. My own father has said he would not want to make an enemy of him. Naturally, I am of the same mind. Your father is blessed with gifts of confidence and eloquence. Yet compared to him, you seem always reticent and downcast. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to cause you discomfort. It's just that the contrast between you and your father is striking. I have very little in common with my adoptive father. Ooh. But he sent you to Garrick Mark. Clearly, he sees potential in you. I think I see it too. Yes, a certain charm, gravitas, if you will, just like gravitas. Him. Oh. I can't say that I know too much about him. I should be going now. Y yes, y yes, of course. Please. So Lauren's care. already knew that she was adopted. Oh, such grace, such serenity. How could such a beauty be hiding in plain sight? With a little polish, she would shine magnificently. Okay, Lawrence. Sure. Whatever you say. Alright, Raphael and Marianne. Hey, Marianne, what's she in? Mind if I join you? I'm starving. Uh huh? Oh, um. All my favorite dishes are on the menu today. I might have grabbed too much. You want some? No, thanks. I... All you've got on your plate are leaves. Leaves. Sure fill you up? Leaves. Uh, I'm done eating now. I have to go. Huh? You're already done eating? But there's still food on your plate. Hey, Marianne! Huh. Maybe she's not feeling well. I should probably go check on her later. Oh, is that so? I'm so happy you found all of that food. A little gray starling told me that you can find berries if you fly out toward the mountains. Who is she talking to? Oh, I found Marianne. I don't know if she spent her time here. It sounds like she's talking to someone. But there's no one there. What's that? Oh, she's talking to the birds. You want to try some nectar from the flowers in the greenhouse? That might be tricky. I guess you could try it if I'm already there. Otherwise, you might get locked in. Hey, Marianne, who are you talking to? Ah! Eek. Big oh. ol' eek. Oh, the birdie flew off. It, yes, it looks like he has. What are you doing here, Raphael? You were acting a little strange when we were eating earlier, so I wanted to check on you. I was worried. Uh, that's sweet of you, but I'm fine. Are you sure? Well, that's good to hear. As long as... Wait a minute! Were you just talking to a bird? <laughs> <laughs> Took you a second to catch on, Raph. I knew it! You can talk to birds! I'm right, aren't I? Uh... uh yes. That's incredible! This place is full of interesting folks. But I didn't think anyone spoke birdie. No, that's not it. This bird just happened to be... Speaking human. Wow. Okay, sure. Amazing. I hope I get to meet a bird who speaks human one day. He's a little thick, isn't he? And I don't mean with two C's. Marianne just wants to talk to everybody today, apparently. I mean, it makes sense. She's a yes, healer. The she has the most interaction you, on the Marianne. battlefield with them. Just when I thought all the laundry was dry, the wind got stronger, and by the time I realized what was happening. There were clothes dancing across the sky. That must have been frustrating to watch. I didn't imagine they would float all the way to the stables. Thanks again for helping me pick them up. It was no trouble. They landed right at my feet. Well, now I can hang it all back up before sunset. Everything should be dry by the day's end. All right, I should get to... <laughs> Are you all right? <laughs> uh-huh. The hamper's just a little heavier than it looks. Do you think you could give me a hand? Whew. 
Whew, we got here just in time. Thanks for the help hanging everything up. It was nothing. Huh. Um... What is it? I'm sorry. I know I'm not much fun to be around. I'm not very good at small talk either. Oh, no, that's all right. After all, just look over there. Huh? Oh, the flowers are lovely. They were mere buds until just the other day. Now look at those gorgeous blooms. How wonderful. If we'd been chatting away, we might never have noticed them. Sure, the laundry was an ordeal, but at least there was a silver lining. Those two will be fast friends. I just enjoy that conversation. Hilda and Ignatz. Bro, there are so many conversations. Hmm? Hey, Ignatz. Sorry to keep you waiting. Ready to start cleaning? No, that's alright. Actually, I'm just finishing up. Oh, it's true. Look how tidy everything is. You've done such a marvelous job. I'm glad I didn't get in your way. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. So anyway, you can go now. Hmm? You were talking to your friend, right? I just have some things to put away. It's okay. I can manage without you. Oh, Ignatz. I thought I saw someone earlier. That was you, wasn't it? You know, I'd have been willing to help. You could have just said, hey, let's go and clean. It's all right, you were having a conversation. I didn't want to sneak up like I was eavesdropping. And really, I didn't need help. Oh, Ignatz, you darling. You're so considerate. Thank you so very much. Glad to be of service. I'll start putting all this away. Not so fast. W what's the matter? Aren't you overdoing it? Don't you think you might be taking on too much, hmm? Oh, uh, I didn't expect to hear that from you. Let me give you some advice. It's true that I like to delegate as many tasks as I possibly can. <laughs> but when someone helps me, I make sure to lavish them with praise as a reward for their hard work. So then we come out even. On the other hand, look what almost happened just now. You did all that work for me, and I almost missed it. Now, where would that leave you? With no praise, no thanks. You'd be losing out. Um, personally, I'd prefer to lose out rather than inconvenience someone else. Hilda is for nothing instance, like I thought she'd I'd be. I'd terrible for intruding on your important conversation earlier. Consider the negligible loss to me versus the major inconvenience to you. Personal loss is always going to be the better choice. Right? Huh. Well, if that's how you feel, then I'm not sure how to convince you otherwise. I always pictured Hilda as like this, uh... I almost want to say kind of a rough and tough kind of girl. Despite the pink hair and eyes. But no, she fits her pink hair and eyes pretty much to the T. What's happening? There's been an accident at the training grounds. A spell gone amok. Come on, we need all the help we can get over there. Oh no, but I don't know how I... We could really use your help before things get out of hand. Come on, hurry! I... I don't think I would be much help. Oh, for the goddess's sake! You won't know unless you try, will you? Don't decide you're of no use without even giving it a shot. Fine then, forget it. I'll go on my own. You can just stand here and stare at the wall. I... <sighs> Yikes. I'm sorry, I can't do anything right. Oh, perhaps I took it too far. Hey, um, Marianne, do you have a minute? Listen. I'm sorry about all the stuff I said earlier. 
The situation was urgent, and I'll admit, I wasn't thinking clearly. I shouldn't have been so callous. I hurt your feelings, didn't I? No, it's fine. I'm the one to blame. Huh? But, hey, are you sure you're all... I'm the one who should apologize. All I did was get in your way. You would have made it to the training grounds much sooner if I hadn't slowed you down. Huh? Wait a second. It's all my fault. It's always my fault. The accident was probably my fault, too. But you were no so there. Negative. I don't know what to say. Oh my god, Marianne really needs to talk to everybody. Why do I have to clean the library? It looks like you're not busy. I was quite busy sampling pastries, I'll have you know. Who wants to sort books anyway? They're so bulky hmm. and heavy, it takes forever to lug them around. It might actually be a lot of fun. Right, Marianne? You agree with me, right? N no, I don't mind it. Oh, you like cleaning then? I will say you look like someone who'd be good at it. I, um, well... In that case, it's all yours. I'd only slow you down if I'm being honest. As I always say, if you want something done right, let someone else do it themselves. Wow. She's really into like right. I'm off to run some errands. I'll leave avoiding all your capable hands. physical work as much as possible. Uh. Hey Marianne, are you? Whoa, what happened? This place looks even worse than before. I didn't realize that was possible. I'm sorry, Hilda. I just didn't know the best way to organize the books while sorting. Oh, well, no way around it, I suppose. I'll show you how it's done. Watch her mess it up. First, you have to decide where you'll put each topic. Then, all of the books that don't match that topic, remove them from the section. When you remove them, you need a temporary place to put them. Let's put books on magic here, books on swordsmanship here. Once you've done that, you just put the books back in their sections, like so. Wow, Hilda, that was incredible. Okay, now she didn't mess yeah, it up. Yeah, what kind praise. Looks like in the end, I'm doing this whole thing on my own, hmm? Sorry. The least I can do is help you put them back on the shelf. <laughs> okay. Okay. Marianne and Leone. Being kicked must have hurt, didn't it, Norte? Did they think you won't gallop unless you're in pain? Aww. It must be difficult letting those brutes ride you. Hey, Marianne, what are you up to? Uh, n nothing. Really? I was sure I heard you talking to someone. By the way, are you free right now? Is there something you need? I was about to go buy towels and soap, but the girls saddled me with all these specific requests. They want it all to look cute or to smell a certain way, but all that's just nonsense to me. I've always made my own towels out of old scraps and soap from used cooking oil. I've never given it much thought beyond that. Oh. But I've noticed you've got some really nice things. So you have an eye for that stuff, right? Obviously, I give you all the credit, and I'm sure everyone would be really grateful for your help. No, no, I don't deserve that kind of praise. Really? I don't think that's true. Come on, you'll be doing me a big favor. My adoptive father tells me I shouldn't stray too far from the monastery. That's nonsense. You've got to get some fresh air now and again. I should stay. Besides, I wouldn't be much help. I don't think anyone would like whatever I pick out anyway. It would all go to waste. And I'm sure that having me around would just cause you misfortune, Leone. Are you serious? I should stay here by myself. Now, hold on just a second. You'll cause me misfortune? What kind of backwards talk is that? 
If you really don't want me around, then at least come out and say it straight. I'm Oof. sorry for the unwelcome invitation. Don't worry, I won't make the same mistake again. <sighs> Leonie is so very Gerald. It's hilarious. Alright, last conversation. This really did take up the whole episode, guys. I'm sorry if you didn't enjoy this, but I, have to organize the I think the conversation library. pieces are half the charm of this done, game. And I can't think of anyone who'd do it for me. Hmm. Since no one else is around, though, time for a little break. What are those sounds? Leone, always at it. How exhausting that must be. Hmm, what's this? Hey, what are you doing? That's mine. If you leave it lying on the ground, people will think it's trash. I usually wear it around my neck, but I put it down while I'm training so I don't get sweat all over it. Well, people won't know that, will they? You should have just left it in your room. It's a good luck charm. If I don't keep it close by, then what's the point? How stubborn of you. I will say it looks to be a very well-loved charm. Ooh. Captain Gerald gave it to me when I was a kid. Oh, that's if it's nice. that important to you, you should wash it. Then again, I suppose it is made of wood. Have you considered coating it with resin? That would preserve it nicely. You could even accessorize it, make it look cute. <laughs> Thanks, but Captain Gerald made it especially for me. I'd really rather keep it just as it is. Well, if that's how you feel, I won't argue with you. Me personally, I'd choose a cute necklace over a dirty old charm any day. I'm sure you. She's wouldn't. such a girly girl. I did not know this about her. But Captain Gerald didn't treat me as some young girl. He treated me like a person who mattered, an equal. He taught me everything. I don't want to forget his teachings, so I'm going to keep this charm just the way it is. Oh, what do you know? Alright. Jeez, that was all the conversation. We haven't even started the battle. But with that, we're going to go ahead and wrap this one up here, guys. Thank you so much if you actually stuck with me through this. Uh, we will be back in the next episode with a proper battle. If you enjoyed, please be sure to leave a like, leave a comment, and subscribe to my channel, and I will talk to you guys next time. Goodbye.